Hi, welcome to Conversations. I'm Joel Ingardio with the American Civil Liberties Union, and today's conversation is with Matt Coles, the director of the ACLU's LGBT project. That's lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender. Matt, thanks for being part of the conversation. Great to be here. Tell us about coming out. You're a gay man. You run the LGBT project at ACLU. You came out. You're 57. You came out in the mid-70s. What was that process like? Um, you know, I started thinking about being gay um, at a time when one of the most popular books in America was a book called Everything You Always Wanted to Know About Sex But Were Afraid to Ask. And, you know, it, it says, you know, what are gay relationships like? And it describes this tawdry sexual encounter in the restroom of a bus station. And it's just appalling. And I think it reflected a widespread understanding that most gay people led sad, isolated lives, that you would never have a relationship, you'd never have a really full life. When I see kids in, in, in high schools forming gay-straight alliances and speaking out on gay rights stuff, um, um, it makes me feel like uh, we've really come a long way and that the work really is paying off. But even so, how many states amended their constitution to discriminate against gay people? 20, 27. 27 amended their constitution to say... Amended their constitutions to say that, that they would not recognize the marriages of same-sex couples. So there's a, there's a lot of work. I mean, that's, that's a lot to overcome. I look at that and I say, the reason that strong reaction occurred is because of a profound belief that um, marriage for same-sex couples is going to happen and the nation's going to accept it. But those amendments, they were voted on by the people. So there's you know, a majority of people <coughs> in those states that actually went to the polls and checked the box and said, I agree with this discrimination. Every kind of discrimination that we've ever had, people have to justify discrimination in their own minds. And the bedrock of every form of, of, of discrimination is to say, those guys over there, they're different. They're different in some very fundamental, basic way, and because they're different, it's okay for me to treat them differently. And with gay people, that's what it's always been. It's the sex and it's icky, and it's the sex and, and attached to that, the notion of an emotional shallowness um, that becomes the justification for it. Tell me about the ick factor, because I'm imagining when people are in that ballot box and they, they're going to check, they're, they're thinking, ick, same-sex couple, same-sex marriage, what is the ick factor? Well, you know, the ick factor, I think, is, is people think about gay people, and when they think about gay people, frequently they think about sex. Um, you know, in a way, that's slightly obnoxious. I mean, I don't think what distinguishes straight people from me is the sex that people have with, you know, that men have with their wives or women have with their husbands. But how do otherwise reasonable people, you know, we're talking about people who, in their heart, don't want to discriminate, but they may have that ick factor. What, what, how do you overcome that hurdle? What does it take for you, for gay, other gay people, for the LGBT project, for the ACLU membership? What, what does it take to get reasonable people to not check that box in the ballot box to discriminate against gay people? I think as, you, as people get to know gay people better, um, that's that, uh, we know that. As you get to know gay people better, that goes away. And I don't think it goes away because people find you know, kinds of sex that are unappealing to them any less icky. I think people can, you know, do that all the time. It's that they begin to realize that that's not what a person's life is about and it's not what their relationships are about. And that gay people are no different than they are in that sense. That their lives really are about the relationships they build and how they work. And, you know, then the sex becomes a much smaller thing. Matt Coles, thank you for being part of the conversation. It's a pleasure. If you're watching Conversations online, I'd like to invite you to click on the next chapter to see the continued conversation with Matt Coles. For the ACLU, I'm Joel Ingardio.